The Honorable Jay Inslee, Governor of the State of Washington. Thanks, I love when you say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A good afternoon. I'd like to start uh, this afternoon by thanking Reverend Dee Eisenhower for her inspiring invocation. You always inspire me, Dee. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, Shayla Rose McCarthy and Bobby Ray. Wasn't that wonderful harmony? Let's bring some harmony to this discussion. I just loved it. And for the University of Washington Huskies, who gave us an incredible season. That was an amazing season. <laughs> Mr. President, Madam Speaker, Mr. Chief Justice, distinguished justices of the court, members of the legislature, tribal leaders, uh, members of the Consular Corps, and most importantly, my fellow Washingtonians. I come to you as a governor, uh, as a granddad, and as a Washingtonian. And I want to start by thanking you and your families for their contribution to our mutual efforts. Uh, my staff and their families also deserve credit as well, particularly my family and a very special person to me, Trudy. I love seeing the child care center she inspired us to build for our capital families. And that's among many causes she's advocated for as first spouse. I, this is in the script, but I want to share a little secret with you. I love you, Trudy, and I'm not alone. <laughs> So let's cut to the chase. I am happy to report that we have been, we are, and we will always be the strongest state in the nation. In fact, the state of our state is stronger than ever. For over a decade, we have advanced nation-leading policies to support working families. We've grown our economy. We've acted boldly to protect our state's iconic places and salmon. We've advanced equity. We've built more housing. We have fought for a woman's right to choose. And we have ushered in a clean energy economy. In an era, <laughs> it is fair to say that in an era of tremendous change, Washington has emerged as a beacon of progress for this nation. And this year, we're going to make sure that that light shines even brighter. This is my, this is my 11th time I've had the honor to address this chamber. And I have a bigger audience every year. There are one million more Washingtonians today than when I took office. Because Washington is the place to be. And I welcome our new Washingtonians who have seen the genius and promise of our great state. The minimum wage was $9 in 2013. Today it's over 16. Wages overall have grown by 39%, double, double the national rate. Our GDP has grown 45% from $528 billion in 2013 to $768 billion today. And we should be proud of this. We are among the very few states that rank as both a top state for business and workers. We've done some great work. Now, as we contemplate this next year and the work ahead, I think back to my dad, Frank Inslee, who coached track at South High School. He told his runners to imagine the finish line was actually 10 yards beyond the tape. 
He wanted to make sure that his runners wouldn't let up before the race was over. My dad always said, and this sticks with me, fellas, run through the tape. We are going to run through the tape this year. And just as I know you'll give this state your best work, I'll give it mine. So this is not a farewell speech. These are not famous last words. I'm not riding into the sunset. Winston Churchill said, this is not time for ease and comfort. It is time to dare and endure. So we will not relent to our greatest challenges. We will not go backwards. This is both the evergreen state and it is the ever forward state. And we should be proud of that. We're going. We're going forward on our evergreen agenda. We know that climate change is hurting us now, today. But climate collapse does not have to be our inevitable future. This legislature put us on a clear and necessary path to slash greenhouse gases by 95% by 2050. Any delay would be a betrayal of our children's future. We are now on the razor's edge between promise and peril. We know this when historic floods gut homes that have stood for generations, or when wildfires, wildfires force the evacuation of entire towns like Medical Lake last year in Malden before that. And the need for climate action is felt daily for Washingtonians living with pollution. There are neighborhoods today in our state where people are dying two and a half years younger on average because of pollution. This pollution is harmful to the lives of Washingtonians. In communities like Everett, Wenatchee, Mattawa, Spokane, Tri-Cities, the Yakima Valley, Shoreline, South King County, and Tacoma. There are neighborhoods in these communities where people are forced to live sicker and die younger because of this pollution. We have made a solemn oath to our children and their children. And in that noble mission, we will neither flag nor fail. We will go on to give them the grandest of blessings, a healthy Washington. We will not take rank with the defeatists who live in the gray twilight of pessimism. We will stay the course and we will win. <laughs> Thanks to this legislator's budget priorities and the Climate Commitment Act, we can help more people like uh, Elisa Garcia, a farm worker in Toppenish. Her home was one of 32 in Yakima County that had rooftop solar installed thanks to a state program specifically geared towards farm workers. Her home now produces 100% of its energy from her own roof. Her family's energy bills are zero, and it would not have been possible without this legislature. Elisa and her daughter Jasmine are here today. Thank you for inspiring us. Many people will follow in your, in your footsteps. Thank you for what you're doing, Elisa. You're going to hear many more stories this year, like this, and beyond about how our climate policies are making life better for Washington families. The Climate Commitment Act is letting us invest in work that reduces pollution and creates good paying jobs. It's funding electric school buses, 8 million free transit rides for youth and county, Filtration systems in schools so students can breathe when there's wildfire smoke outside, and public chargers for electric vehicles. I think it's important to note, this is money going right back to Washington families. It's not going off to Houston or other oil hubs with the oil industry's record $200 billion in profits in 2022. And now we have more that we can give back to our communities. I'm proposing a $200 utility bill credit 
for one out of every three households in Washington. That's nearly two million low and moderate income Washingtonians. We will help thousands more families install energy efficient heat pumps that cut emissions and energy bills. And this law makes it easier to invest in our infrastructure, including hybrid electric ferries and safer bike and pedestrian routes. From sustainable aviation fuels and EV battery manufacturing in Moses Lake to electric buses in Ferndale, we're attracting and creating thousands of good paying jobs in clean energy and clean technology. And we're training the folks who worked at places like Transalta for jobs in this new clean energy economy. And I got to tell you, these jobs are coming on so quickly. The new Pacific Northwest. Brian or excuse me, Brian uh, Oriwella of Auburn was going to be an engineer, but then he was in a traumatic car accident, followed by really high medical bills, and he had to leave college. Fortunately, he got connected to Computing for All's pre-apprenticeship program, which is this legislature uh, designed to help support the Career Connect Washington grants. Now he's a developer at a mental health app, and Brian's here today. You got a bright future, Brian. Thanks for uh, allowing us to tell your story. I appreciate that, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this, this legislature cares about people. I know that because what you've done. This state saved thousands and thousands of lives when COVID struck. We are now just one of a handful of states with the tools to curb excessive drug costs. We have more ways to grow our health care workforce. We've passed the nation's best paid family medical leave program. In fact, I heard a story about this just the other day. I biked up to uh, the town and country market on Bainbridge. I went up to get some maple bars for my grandkids. Uh, this woman behind the counter said, Governor, I have to tell you something. Now, my fellow electorates know when you hear a constituent say that, something cryptic, you could be in for anything, right? So I was prepared. But here's what she said. She said, Governor, I had a broken wrist last year, and I couldn't do my job. And the only thing that kept my family afloat was the paid family medical leave law. And I really hope you are having those conversations in your districts as well, because your policies are making an enormous difference in people's lives. And now we've got more work to do. Protecting access to health care is helping Washingtonians like Sheena and John Wilson from Mount Vernon. Sheena's husband, John, was diagnosed with cancer. They expected their health care costs would go up to $3,000 a month. 
until she accessed the benefits of our Cascade Care public option. Her family now pays just $108 a month, and the most they'll pay out of pocket this year for her husband's cancer treatment is $2,500. John and Sheena are here today. They're an example of your work. John and Sheena, thank you for allowing us to tell your story. We appreciate that, John and Sheena. Our policies change lives when they're focused on the people we're here to serve. We give people the chance to succeed. People-focused policies are also how we're addressing homelessness. Some think we can just wave a wand and those living in homelessness will simply disappear. But this is the real world, and we have an honest solution. Build more housing, connect people to the right services, and they'll have a chance to succeed. This time last year, a woman named Star Draper found herself in a right-of-way encampment at First Avenue and Michigan Street in Seattle. We know that no one can live in danger and expect their conditions to improve. No one can be swept from one dark corner to another and expect life to get better. We must lift, lift people up and give them the tools, the services, and the power of community necessary to get life back on track. State and local collaboration got star on her journey to wellness. And she said of this program, quote, it renewed my trust. Now, star has got work, she's got a safe private place to live, and she's here today. Congratulations, Star. Where are you up there? There's Star. Washingtonians can see that dozens of encampments along our highways are no longer there. And we need to know that that will continue only if we make additional necessary investments. And they're going to see thousands more new housing units thanks to your work as well. I want to thank this legislature for going big on housing last session and trusting that it was a necessary decision to put just under $1 billion toward new housing already this biennium. These aren't the only ways we're making life safer for Washingtonians while I've been in office. We all want to take steps to increase public safety. And in that regard, it's not just one solution, but many. This legislature was bold enough to stand up to the NRA and pass some of the best gun reforms in Washington. And it did not matter how many defeats we had to take. We finally banned assault weapons in this state Gun reform is public safety in the state of Washington. <laughs> Washington state also needs more police officers, and that's what this budget, I hope, will do. My budget funds more state troopers and forensic scientists an organized retail theft task force, thanks to the idea from our Attorney General, and more funding for drug trafficking investigations. We are removing barriers to careers in policing by establishing training centers all over the state, where more recruits are getting some of the best training in the country, including, importantly, de-escalation training. We're joined today by the Pasco Police Department's own Claudia Fuentes, Claudia would not be a police officer today if this legislature had not invested in more criminal justice training centers like in Pasco. It's impossible for a parent to spend four and a half months away from home for training in Burien that she would have had to have done. But because we invested in these training centers, Officer Fuentes got to go home from the academy, and because of that resource, the people of Pasco are safer. Thank you, Claudia, what you're doing. Congratulations on your career. Now, we all know we must also continue improving behavioral health services in our state. I recently met someone whose family was devastated by fentanyl. 
They called it the nuclear weapon of drugs. We proposed $64 million in new spending to fight against opioids and fentanyl. We're going to invest in education, community health hubs, overdose pre prevention, treatment access, and recovery supports. We're going to support people with stories like Holly Edwards. Holly's a member of the Sunamish tribe whose life languished in addiction to meth and heroin before she got help at local resource centers. Holly got her life back, and she's now herself a recovery counselor helping people on the same journey at the Swinomish Wellness Center in Anacortes. Holly is here today, and I want to thank her and the Swinomish for helping not just tribal members, but our whole community. Thank you, Holly, and what the Swinomish people are doing. Really appreciate it. This legislature works wonders when it embraces ambition. We've passed the two biggest transportation funding packages in state history during my time in office, connecting Washington and Move Ahead Washington. Yet we know we still face questions about how to meet our ambitions. Now, I don't expect we're going to have all the answers to that this year, but there are things we can do in the next 60 days, including helping our ferry system. We're already investing in cleaner, more efficient ferries. And I've directed the state ferries to look for any way they can to expedite boat construction. But we also must do everything we can to increase staffing. I've proposed several things to help us do that. I hope you'll pass those measures as well. We need it in the state of Washington. Are under no illusion that social justice issues were somehow settled 60 years ago with the passage of the Civil Rights Act. We will continue advancing social justice, and we have made equity a part of everything we do in state government with environmental justice policies. We've done so with environmental justice policies like the HEAL Act and a new agency, the Office of Equity. We must maintain our progress against racism, pernicious influence on the past and the present. The genius of America, I believe, is that we can recognize that we're not yet in a state of perfection, but we will always work to form a more perfect union. And that's what we're doing in the state of Washington. Before I close, I want to say that there are two grave threats in the United States and unfortunately in our state today. One threat is to the very basic tenets and blessings of democracy. The other is the ongoing assault on a woman's right of choice. We have not forgotten the U.S. Supreme Court's frightening decision to eliminate Roe versus Wade. Fundamentally, this is an issue of freedom. Freedom of choice when facing one of the most intimate and personal decisions in life. Most in this room are committed to protecting that right. But none of us are going to hold these seats forever. We must face the harsh reality that there are forces in our Amendment protecting the right of choice this year. And I hope you're working to get that done. I'd like to share with you why I'm so optimistic about this session. 
If I have learned anything with each subsequent legislative session, it's that Washingtonians are always capable of doing more than others thought we could. When I took office, we had audacious goals that defied the odds that have become reality. I had confidence we could tackle these challenges because I've always believed in the unique talent and ambitions of Washingtonians. Washingtonians have more resilience, more love for our state, and more endurance to push toward the sunny uplands of the future than any other people on the planet. The next two months, we are going to make this state better at mental health, safer against opioids, more supportive for educators and students, and more committed to our climate action. We've made hope for the future possible because Washingtonians are never restricted by the past or the bog of the status quo. Inevitably, we will always be called upon to do more for the people of Washington. And no matter the challenge, we will always do more than we thought possible. It is our honor to be Washingtonians. It is our privilege to do this work, and it is our destiny to succeed. Run through the tape. Thank you. Good luck to us all. I'm with Chase. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Governor Inslee, very much. Well, the